The Boeing 787 Dreamliner is nothing short of a marvel in the skies, a testament to the future of aviation. Being a symbol of innovation and elegance, airlines around the globe have been captivated by its unparalleled efficiency, range, and passenger comfort. Though it seemed destined for success in every aspect, the reality was in contrast. Boeing wished to make the Dreamliner's Dash 8 variant a bestseller, but dismally failed. Why no one buys it? What should Boeing do to change the situation? Let's find it in today's episode. First, let's explore the purpose behind Boeing's creation of the 787-8. Launched in 2004 and entering service in 2011, this is the smallest member of the Dreamliner family, but its small size has a clear purpose. Boeing designed it to achieve two major goals. First, it was intended to replace the aging 767 series. The Boeing 767, particularly the 300ER version, was a successful aircraft with nearly 600 orders. However, after many years of service, airlines needed a more modern option to replace it. The Boeing 787-8 was designed to provide a direct replacement for the 767, offering similar capabilities but with improved efficiency. The Dash 8 has comparable passenger and cargo capacity to the 767-300ER, but thanks to its advanced design and lightweight composite materials, it is up to 30% more fuel efficient. This allows airlines to save on operating costs, especially on medium and long haul routes. Second, one of Boeing's bigger ambitions with the 787-8 was to help airlines expand their route networks, particularly between smaller cities, known as secondary cities, that previously lacked sufficient demand to sustain direct flights with larger or less efficient aircraft. With the ability to fly up to 7,300 nautical miles, about 13,500 kilometers, it can connect cities on opposite ends of the world without requiring a stopover, creating new opportunities for airlines to operate long and thin routes where passenger numbers aren't large enough to fill bigger planes. The aircraft is equipped with pioneering technologies like fanless engine architecture and high aspect ratio wings, but its most impressive feature is its composite structure which significantly reduces weight. These innovations make it approximately 30% more efficient than previous aircraft. This is a very unique combination. No other wide-body aircraft can pack so much endurance and efficiency into one package, and Boeing believed that this formula would make airlines eager for it. For the first time in history, airlines would have an aircraft capable of profitably serving small cities that are far apart. This would make it far more appealing than the 767 ever was, allowing it to become one of the best-selling aircraft of all time. However, this aircraft did not meet the manufacturer's expectations. As of now, the Boeing 787-8 has received a total of around 416 orders. Most of these orders have been delivered, with only a few remaining in Boeing's order book. This indicates that demand for this variant has significantly slowed in recent years, with very few new orders recorded since 2020. Meanwhile, a total of 431 units of the Dash 9 and 10 versions have been sold. There's no doubt that demand for the Dreamliner series remains strong, but the Dash 8 version is struggling. So, what is the reason? Thanks for following until this part. Please don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. Now, let's move to the next part to explore why 787 can't be Boeing's best-selling. First, it completed its replacement mission. The 787-8 was initially designed to replace the 767 series. In its early years, many airlines purchased this variant to replace their aging 767S. However, after major airlines like All Nippon Airways, Japan Airlines, and American Airlines replaced their 767 fleets, the market for this replacement demand dried up. Most major airlines had already upgraded, leading to a decline in new orders for this variant. As for its second mission, expanding routes and meeting industry demand, it became even more challenging due to competition. In fact, the Dreamliner doesn't have any real competitors in its segment, so how did competition impact its sales? Secondly, the sales of the Boeing 787-8 have dropped significantly due to strong competition from modern narrow-body aircraft like the Airbus A321, NEO, and A321XLR. 
Although it was initially designed to replace the Boeing 767 and provide long-range capability for lengthy routes, the new narrow-body versions from Airbus have changed the market. The A321, NEO, and XLR have a much lower empty weight, around 50,000 kilograms compared to its 120,000 kilograms, leading to lower operating costs per seat. The passenger capacity of the A321 NEO or XLR, ranging from 206 to 240 seats, is only slightly less than that of the Dreamliner, but with much lower operating and acquisition costs. Specifically, the A321 XLR, with a range of up to 8,700 kilometers, close to some of the Boeing 8's long haul routes, has become the favored choice for airlines looking to optimize profits on long distance routes with moderate passenger traffic. Airlines often opt for narrow body aircraft due to their operational flexibility, allowing them to expand their route networks without investing in expensive wide body aircraft like the Dash 8. As a result, it has lost its unique market position and its sales have declined as airlines shift to the more economical and efficient solutions offered by the A321neo and A321xlr. The weight advantage of the XLR can largely be attributed to the fact that it is a single aisle design, requiring smaller engines, smaller wings, and less material overall. As a result, on a per seat basis, the NEO consumes much less fuel than the Dreamliner, and most airlines have shown they are willing to accept its slightly lower capacity in exchange for better economic performance. Additionally, the NEO is much cheaper than the Dreamliner. If you were in fleet management for an airline, would you prioritize capacity and range or economic efficiency? Let me know in the comments below. Narrow-body aircraft like the A321neo have always had a cost-per-seat advantage over wide-body aircraft like the Boeing aircraft, but they couldn't compete before due to range limitations. However, with the introduction of the XLR variant capable of flying up to 4,700 nautical miles, the situation has changed. The A321neo or XLR has now become the preferred choice for long routes that the Dreamliner used to serve. Additionally, on longer routes, the Dash 9 is more efficient than the Dash 8 due to its optimized design and advanced features. As a result, the sales of this variant have slowed down. As a result, it also faces competition from the 787-9, a larger version of the Dash 8, designed with more advanced features and greater passenger capacity. The bigger variant offers a longer range and lower operating cost per seat compared to the smaller version. Consequently, Many airlines have opted for the bigger Dash 9 over for the long haul routes. This has reduced demand for the smaller variant as airlines find the Dash 9 to be a better option for a variety of routes. However, as long as the Dreamliner Dash 9 and 10 remain popular, Boeing is not overly concerned about the Dash 8 stagnation. Perhaps it could find a new role in the niche market as a freighter, tanker, or patrol aircraft. Only time will tell. For instance, the 737-800 airframe, with components mixed from other models, has found new life as a highly successful military derivative currently in high demand. The next question is what Boeing should do to change the situation. The company has many priorities, such as resolving issues and obtaining certification for the MAX 7, MAX 10, and 777X. However, if they are concerned about 787-8 sales, here are some potential solutions. There are still several major airlines like United, Delta, Iceland Air, and Japan Airlines operating the Boeing Dreamliner Dash 8 that might be interested in placing additional orders. United is the most likely candidate since they still operate many 767S that need replacement. Japan Airlines, a major operator of this aircraft, might also consider placing more orders. Delta might be less interested due to their strong ties with Airbus, but the possibility remains since they have ordered the 737 MAX 10. Iceland Air is probably the least likely to purchase the Dreamliner-8, as they might replace their 767S with the A321 XLR. However, it could still be useful for longer routes or those requiring greater capacity. Additionally, Boeing could market the Dreamliner-8 as a replacement for the 757, although this might not be entirely feasible. The 737 MAX cannot match the 757 in terms of flexibility, range, and capacity, but the Dash 8 has proven effective on similar missions. 
If Boeing positions it as a direct replacement for the 757, it might attract demand from airlines looking for a wide-body aircraft to help alleviate airport congestion. According to you, the 757 was a favorite among many passengers. If Boeing pursues this strategy, would it be viable? Finally, Boeing could get creative and market this aircraft as a competitor to the A321 XLR. While there is no direct competitor, this Dreamliner has comparable capacity and could be positioned as a premium option for airlines, especially since Boeing has no immediate plans to produce the 797. What do you think Boeing could do? Do you believe there is still a position for the 787-8 in the market? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.